I hope you prepared for your final exam, Miss Granger. Absolutely, Professor McGonagall. Thanks to the time turner you lent me. You may find this a bit more challenging than our previous exercises. Collect all five challenge shields to earn a perfect score on your exam. You may begin. So each of these final exams is an introductory cutscene that I wanted to make sure I recorded, and for whatever reason I didn't feel like recording all three final exams in one go, so they're split up like this. Too bad you can't just chew through these roots either. I know rabbits don't do that, at least with thick roots, but that would still fall under the category of eating like a herbivore. Uh, yeah, I should probably go for the dirt mound first. Is there even anything down in these pits? I guess not, probably just thorns. It's a shame that Professor Sprout doesn't make an appearance in this game either, like she did in the last two Harry Potter games on the PC platform. I realize that this is a transfiguration lesson and not a herbology class, but still. And those Bundaman monsters... Fuck, I actually fell off. But they seem like the kind of thing you'd be more likely to encounter in a herbology lesson anyways. Or perhaps Defense Against the Dark Arts, too. There's some overlap regarding what class would be most appropriate for learning certain things. I don't even know why I fell off. It's like I just casually walked off the edge like a fucking idiot. Now, just be sure not to take a shit in that hole after digging in it. I gotta literally jump on that tile. Oh boy, here we go again with these radioactive lily pads. Since that gas does negligible damage, I don't really see the point in waiting for it to dissipate. Especially if I'm going to get like a dozen chocolate frogs along the way anyways. Wouldn't it be great if a spongify tile covered in dirt ejected all that dirt into the air when triggered? Like, just an explosion of soil erupts into your face and finally makes Hermione's hair properly brown again. Uh... There's immediately another shield locked away in front of me? And I thought I hit this one already. Wait, what was that all about? I had to cast a Pulso once at three suits of armor and twice at a fourth one and that's all I needed to do to get the second shield? Where's the challenge in that? Did you only need to figure out that you had to hit one of the suits of armor twice? Is that it? What the fuck did that have to do with transfiguring anything? Oh, and look at that. And immediately behind the next door are two more shields in front of me, albeit locked behind the gates. Now, what's this supposed to be? Uh, do I seriously just need to stand on four tiles and cast a Pulso four times? Surely that's not going to just get me access to one of these shields as easily as casting the Pulso at four suits of armor. No, apparently not. Okay, at least there's a little more depth to getting these shields than I originally suspected walking into this room. I mean, sure, you should expect that by default anyways, but you'll forgive me for being skeptical of how difficult the rest of this final exam might be, given how easily I earned the second shield. I guess I'm supposed to fly into that hole. Wait, I'm fucking stupid. I should take the fireball with me just in case. I'm sure I'll need it. Oh, timer, that's interesting, but it sure moves fast. Okay, never mind, I guess that was more than enough time to walk ten feet forward. It's interesting how, instead of one long timer for this whole portion of the exam, it's segmented into different parts with its own individual time limit. 
I think I like that, actually. Okay, that's different, but certainly a welcome change in the sense that it's a gameplay mechanic that I've not had to deal with yet. Oh, and same here, too. Now, this is quite elaborate, actually. I just hope I don't fuck up by trying to collect all these beans at the same time. Okay, so going through the ceiling isn't that difficult. In fact, it looks like about half of the outer surface area of these rotating discs, excluding the center, is just empty space for you to fly through. Okay, interesting. There was at least one other path, probably two, since there's two other shields to unlock that I need to fly through with the dragon, so I'll have to find different fireballs and fire platform thingies to ignite. Pretty cool, but how do they come up with something that elaborate, yet all that's required for me to get the second shield is to attack four suits of armor? Makes no sense. I think my time limit is about to expire, though. Oh, well, never mind. Good god, this is a lot of shit to fly through. I can't believe I got through all those without crashing. Oh, never mind, I just jinxed it. Seriously, fuck this horseshit with the wings clipping the walls and stopping me in my tracks. God damn it, go forward, you reptilian blowtorch! I swear to god. Although at least I can see the next shield up ahead, even though I can't pick it up with the dragon. Yes, there's a platform for me to unlock the gate here. That's good. I can get that larger shield in the center later. Looks like that's the exit that I'll have to go through anyways, and I bet grabbing that one will end the final exam before I get a chance to get the last shield on the right. That's the other challenge, if you're impulsive at least. Don't grab that shield before any of the others. These timers remind me that at least there's no time limit for the main courses or the final exams overall. And speaking of time, I wanted to say something about Episode 8 where Harry and Hermione travel back in time. You remember how you're not supposed to be seen by anyone else when you do that? Well, unfortunately, I think a great opportunity was missed to use the invisibility cloak in the same way that Harry snuck around Filch in the first game. Harry had to walk slowly and also wait until Filch wasn't looking before casting spells such as Alahamora to get around to different areas because he had to lift up the invisibility cloak repeatedly to cast any spell, making him vulnerable and visible for a couple of seconds. While the invisibility cloak isn't used for going back in time in the book or movie, they've made changes to the plot for the purpose of a video game adaptation before, such as when Harry's Polyjuice Potion prematurely wears off while he's in the Slytherin common room and he has to sneak out. That's a deviation from the source material's plot, but it's a brilliant one for a video game because it gives the player a new and interesting challenge. It's also been mentioned infrequently that our three main protagonists can all fit underneath the cloak for the first few years, or simply just two of them at a time as they continue to grow bigger. So I feel like they could have done something like revisiting the invisibility cloak and engaging in stealth gameplay to add yet another element of strategy to the Prisoner of Azkaban and diversify the experience. But instead, Harry and Hermione merely got separated from each other yet again, just like they did in the cave between the Whomping Willow and Shrieking Shack. Well, great. Where the fuck do I go now? This could be a challenge. I don't even know how you can see where you're going anyways, Hermione. And why are there two save books? Okay, so I can't go back the way I came, either. They knew I would try that and locked the gate again. Oh, and speaking of Episode 8, there was that cutscene where they encounter Sirius Black in the Shrieking Shack, but unlike the movie and especially the book, there's absolutely no emotional impact there. I have... mixed feelings about this. On the one hand, if you're familiar with the source material that this game is drawing from, then the lack of emotion at that part of the story just feels horrible. On the other hand, I'm not sure what they were supposed to do in the sense that this is supposed to be a video game that you spend time playing, not its own movie rendered with video game engine. So, for an adaption where you want to maximize the amount of time playing and minimize the amount of cutscenes you're watching, you have to condense things down as much as possible, so it's like... I feel like that kind of sucks, but... On the other hand, the rest of my brain thinks that they did the best they reasonably could without needlessly drawing everything out. 
Although they really should have taken more advantage of this game's ability to show expression on the characters' faces. Please just let this be over. I really don't find this terribly interesting anymore, and I hate navigating mazes in a dragon-like fursuit. God fucking damn it, again with the wing clipping. Oh man, I'm still stuck on this one. Also, you might think the moving walls would be harder to get through, but they're actually much easier than the regular walls. Just keep flying forwards and they'll move out of your way for you. It's like they added the moving walls as an extra challenge, but accidentally made it so that the normal walls are the hard part and the moving walls are the easy part. Okay, I just went in a circle again. The fuck do I do now? Seriously, what would you ever need more than one save book for? I guess they disappear after each use, so if, for whatever reason, this was difficult enough that you wanted to stop the game and come back later, you wouldn't lose whatever progress you had made so far on your final exam. This could be a challenge. Wow, I cannot believe I actually fucked that up. The time limit, that is. But I don't think I've ever seen two save books side by side like that anywhere else in the game. I guess whatever playtesters they hired, and I should have been one of them except for the fact that I was much younger and not nearly as good at critical analysis back then, probably had so much trouble with this part of the game that they thought it was necessary, so it's not quite as absurd as six chocolate frogs at once like we had in the previous final exam. Wait, what if I... Aha! Fucking finally! I figured this shit out after like three or four minutes. If it weren't for this crap, it would have maybe been a shorter episode than the Carpe Retractum challenge. Alright, let's do this and get out of here. Did I seriously just miss the flame receptacle thingy? Oh well, this will be over soon regardless. This could be a challenge. Nah, just gotta aim properly next time. At least I know what to do now. Although, I wonder why video games don't get the movie actors to do the voice acting for their own characters more often. I guess they're busy or it's too expensive to hire the same talent that appears in the films to justify the cost. You son of a bitch! Get up there! Quit fooling around. Actually, I wonder how far I can fly up though. Okay, not very far. Very good. We're effectively done here. I just need to... I keep forgetting which keyboard key releases the dragon from my control. I changed my mind. I think I'll fuck around for a minute. There were more beans, pasties, and cakes beyond here anyways. Yeah, I'm sure that's a lot of fun for you, isn't it? You've even got your own little dance. At least it's not as bad as the gnomes from the last couple of games and their taunting, twerking moves. Though I forgot about getting more items with the dragon, but too late now. I'm not casting Draconophores again just for that. You scored 100%, Miss Granger. Exactly what I expected of you. Thank you, Professor McGonagall. I do wish the term wasn't over so soon. There's so much more I'd like to learn. Peace yourself, Miss Granger. If not for yourself, for the rest of us. And I feel like that in-game dialogue was the perfect way to conclude any final exam given to Hermione Granger. It certainly was an interesting challenge.